Good morning, YouTube. Wanted to preview what we're getting into next. Um, had an old either Bryant or Payne or some off-brand ICP uh, condenser that kept tripping the breaker. The customer had two other contractors come out and basically give him the same story that I gave him, saying that the compressor was dead and that uh, it, he would be better off simply upgrading rather than buying a compressor out of warranty. Um, our price for that compressor out of warranty was over $2,300. And by the time you spend $2,300 on a compressor just to keep an old, less efficient system, you'd be better off scratching that check as a down payment towards financing or something. But anyway, we discussed options, visited all the different potential uh, situations, and he has a three or two or three year old uh, hydronic air handler, hot water heating with air conditioning coil, and so he was not terribly interested in scratching that unit off and going all new and so with a little bit of reservation we came to the conclusion that our best bet would be to apply a dry charge condenser and get him up to par with um, what you know what he's got inside um, so that's where we're headed now. We are installing an air temp uh, dry charged two ton condenser. Probably not going to be terribly exciting, but I'll try to catch some video good for you and um, see if we can make sure that that thing's actually running well when we're done. Um, we've got a indoor TXV, I believe. I didn't crack the air handler open previously, but the customer did show us the 410A TXV that was removed from the air handler uh, when it was installed. So we have, I hope, a safe assumption, and I will confirm, but we have a safe assumption that the metering device is uh, compatible with the condenser. Um, so, stay tuned, and we'll take you along for the ride. Okay, so we've got the condenser pumping down, or being recovered. And I was in here trying to confirm the TXV, which we do have. Does appear to be an R22 TXV. A little green tag on it. But look at this. That's deplorable. <sighs> so I guess I get to figure out where to put that expansion bulb. Obviously I've got great access because back there I've got screws and the door frame is here. I'm not 100% sure how I'm supposed to get to those but we'll do what we can. But what I was going to do while we were um, getting the refrigerant out of the system was check my airflow so that once we were up and running we would have everything ready to go so we're gonna take that off the TXV bulb and uh, relocate it to a better location all right so we got the expansion bulb relocated outside the cabinet where we can get a good returning refrigerant um, reading and just going to insulate that get the door back on I was looking at or I was hoping that I might be able to relocate this drain over to the left side because the air handler is leaning and with this piping in the way it's not possible to get the air handler to stand up unless we cut the water heater out and spin it and get those pipes to go somewhere else 
but we'll get it insulated the drain it is a slant coil so that it it isn't a huge issue if the air handler is not straight because the coil only has a very small drain pan and we are on the primary drain side of it which is the left side of that small drain pan so once I get this buttoned back up we will run the fan hopefully we can find some paperwork on this air handler to confirm what static pressure gives us what airflow and confirm that we've got proper airflow return static at point zero nine Adding supply static gives us 0 0.21, 0 0.22. Now as soon as we find blower data, we'll be able to confirm if that's acceptable. Oh, well, as usual, I get busy and rushed and just don't feel like shooting video or something I don't know maybe I just don't love you anymore but we got the system in I'm a little bit concerned that the existing TXV is not properly functioning if it has been under poor condition not installed properly for this long only three years but still if it's been bad this long then it's possible that it just is bad but let me wait for the train I ended up with a 13 degree sub cool and a 30 degree superheat and I just don't think that's right um, I may actually see if we can go back with a piston The condenser tells you that for a rated tonnage, the paperwork for the condenser tells you that for a rated tonnage, you use a specific size piston. So we've got that information to guide us and it doesn't have any information about TXV. Um, so I, I think that may just be the better way to go. But the next one we got is a reversing valve on a Goodman package heat pump. And it's going to be a bear. Um, I can't think of the model number off the top of my head, though it might be in my phone. should be in my phone. But the condenser coil wraps all the way around the outside end of the unit. And the reversing valve is barely accessible through the side panel where the refrigerant pressure test ports are. Um, so I'll see what I can get for video on that one and uh, bring you guys along for that ride as well. We'll see you in a bit. So here's my reversing valve back in there and from the top side down there trying to figure out the best way to get it out and I haven't come up with a good excuse yet well we got the sucker out wasn't actually as bad as I thought it might have been um, got the pipes in place and uh, Shouldn't be too bad to get it back in. Worst part is going to be if I get one pipe hot and it won't uh, won't budge to allow another pipe to come in or something like that. But so far, not quite as aggravating as I thought it might be, which is good.
one man I see you walking 